Hello my stray viewer, in this video we're gonna start building that bike. An episode will feature its design, engine assembly, making mufflers and even an engine start. This bike has a working title, the Diesel Punk. It is a maxi scooter with a Soviet Zaz car engine. The design here is primary, it causes all technical solutions. Oh come on, it is so insane, I just have to build it. Inside the fairing there will be a 40 horsepower 1.2 liter air-cooled V4 engine with a snowmobile CVT attached. Then power is transferred by chain to a shaft, then to a bevel gear, and then by another chain to a wheel. Looks wild, but I believe a scooter must have a CVT. If you've got a better idea, welcome to the comments section. Let's have a bloody quarrel. Anyway, a CVT fits this space perfectly. Now let me show you the work around the vehicle's engine. First of all I took off the cylinder heads and disassembled them. Valves were ok, stems and guides were fine, only grinding was required. Heads and cylinders were good too, but very dirty. The sticky dirt of oil and sand was burnt onto them. Washing didn't help that much, so a soda blasted them. It's the same process as sand blasting, but it uses baking soda powder instead. The process itself is hard both to see or to film, but here's the result. That's better. Almost beautiful, just a slight rasp finish is necessary. Well, now it's fine. Then I did the same to the second cylinder head and restored the exhaust ports. And then it was time to paint and assemble those heads. Ah, beautiful! The paint is, by the way, heat resistant and good for aluminum. Then I replaced all of the case screws with studs. Screws react with aluminum magnesium alloy, making some white dust. They stick as hell. Soviet quality, ladies and gents. All rubber parts and gaskets got replaced too. Fuel pump and oil filler neck were replaced with covers. Then came the carburetor's turn. It was disassembled. Some wicked yellow dust was found inside. The dust got removed and the carburetor got reassembled. It is in fine condition, so it must work. I also washed the pistons and adjusted their weight to equal with the dispersion under half a gram, and did the same with connecting rods. Well, 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 what's next? And next comes the longest part of the video, the mufflers. I'm at the workshop for a couple of evenings a week. The engine took two months, but mufflers took over half a year. First, we calculate, draw and cut some paper cones for our mufflers. Well, this cone looks fine. Let's make a model now. Then let's disassemble our model and put pieces on stainless steel sheet to cut muffler parts. Cutting them is both clean and easy. Now, when we got a set of shiny metal things, we just wrap them around the pipe with a rubber hammer. Of course, they did not fit the motor, so I had to remove central sections and redesign the upper ones. You see the new version being welded. I learned to weld later, so the boss is doing it now. Well, we've got some nice cones ready. Any muffler must have some filling inside, so they need end caps to hold it. It's paper, metal work, etc. But here we go, leaving a ton of work behind the scenes to show that custom bike building is easy, quick and no pain in the ass. Next step is attaching some pipe pieces to those caps. The inner ones required some milling. I forgot to shoot those caps separately, so here they are on a video which is too early to show yet. The work seems to progress. 
I ask Gary to weld those cones. Then I rasp, grind and polish them. And here's the result. Shiny but all scratches are visible. Anyway, I decided to leave it as is for a while and to move forward to exhaust pipes. So we need some stainless bands and pipe pieces. Together they form some zigzags like that. What we have to add is some H-pipes. They connect to separate mufflers together so the shockwave has double volume to spread. This makes the sound lower and quieter. And now when the H-pipes are ready, we mill some holes in our exhaust pipes. Well, looks not so bad. I also ordered some plasma cut stainless flanges and bended them behind the scenes. <sighs> ok, now let's assemble and weld all of these together. Here are our pipes before and after some grinding and sanding. Not bad at all. I even sanded the muffler coats. I hated the polish, it was too glossy. So here we can check out the final result in metal. Now let's weld those cones to these pipes and start filling the mufflers. I'll fill them with stainless kitchen sponges sold in every supermarket around and with basalt fabric. Look, it's not even melting unlike the one I bought before. Those sponges will sit around a triple layered stainless mesh pipe. It fits the cone very well, I don't think I have to weld it. So I attach a mesh pipe to a muffler cap and start putting the sponges on. Then some more sponges. And more. Now let's try the whole assembly on. It's fine, so I make a huge piece of fabric and wrap it around. Stainless wire is used for stitches. A pleasantly soft muffler filling is born. The last step is putting those fillings in and tightening the screws. Ooh, it's finally ready! Let's see how it looks on the engine now. Well, I love it! Worth the efforts! By the way, muffler holes are smaller than the pipes. How do you think? Will it affect the engine performance notably? Well, that was an exhausting work. It took so much time, because after every single move I had to grind and sand pipes or cones again and again. After welding a couple of spots, you need to grind around and to sand the whole part again. Pipes even got deformed after welding, so I had to cut, weld, grind and sand them again. That's the amount of sandpaper used for one cone or one pipe. This was a sandpaper hell for me. But I'm so pleased with the results, I'm sure it was worth it. Now let's try to start our engine and listen to our mufflers. First of all, I got rid of an oil heatsink. I'll put a bigger one later. Mufflers are already in place. The left set is put upside down to use an engine's starter. Later there will be another starter in another place. I put on a ladder ignition set and a carburetor. And that's it, here we go! First attempts are a failure. Almost no combustions are heard. There's even a tiny funny fire. I've mixed up the spark wires. After fixing these, the motor starts to make more sounds. Pressure lamp goes off when the starter is working, so the oil pump is ok. I adjusted the ignition a little and... Wow. 
Well, I was so happy that I kept smiling for a week. The sound was better and vibrations were lower than I expected. That tremendous work was a success. Now let's peek into coming videos. First, I thought to use Lada car brake drums as hubs, but they're made of aluminum silicon alloy, so they'll probably crack even if I drop them on the floor. If you get any ideas on drum brakes, please share them in the comment section. I also bought a Soviet Snowmobile CVT set. It is tuned for low revving 4-stroke motors, and a Honda CRV transfer case will be a bevel gear. Finally, I already have a CVT case designed and plasma cut. It looks like a heap of pretty metal pieces, but these pieces can be assembled. For example, this is a driven pulley bracket. Well, it is time to say goodbye. Subscribe, like and share this video to your biker friends. Go and press some buttons, I say! <laughs> See you in the next Dieselpunk video. Bye-bye!